Introduction Hello, hello, my little freaks. You don't remember me, but I am Toofty, and I've come to you from time. Time is eternal. From eternity, you can go wherever you like, whenever you like. 3,000 years ago, I was a priestess of the Temple of Isis. Who I am now, I will divulge sometime later. The important thing is that I know who you are, and I'll tell you about that in due course. For you already know who you are, right? You have been brought into the world deprived of a self-instruction manual. Of course, they taught you to wash your hands, change your nappies, but you don't know any more than that, either about yourself or the world. For example, you think you have your own opinion, whereas, in fact, that opinion was implanted in you. You think that you are in control of your actions, whereas, in fact, it is much more important to control your thoughts. Can you? No. You're just little brainless idiots. It makes me want to slap you. I know, you're lonely, unhappy, and think nobody loves you. But I love you, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you how the world works and what is really happening. I'll tell you why you're here and what to do with your life. Because you don't know what to do with your life, do you? You see, get comfortable on your potties and listen. Let's start with the fact that reality is not quite as you imagine it to be. Reality is multi-layered, like an onion. You are familiar with two layers only, the physical reality in which you live and the dream space that you see when you fall asleep every night. The dream space is not a figment of your imagination. It is real and it takes the form of something like a film archive in which everything is stored that ever was, will be, or ever could be. When you dream, you are watching one of the films from the archive. In this sense, your dream is real and an illusion at the same time. The film you are watching is virtual, while the film role itself is material. Reality is what has never been and never will be, and only is here and now. Reality exists only for a single moment, like a frame on a film roll, which moves from the past into the future. Your life, or rather your essence, your soul, also moves from one incarnation into another. There was a time when you were all fish, dinosaurs, and all kinds of crawling reptiles. Don't kid yourself that you've moved on so much since then. There's still a long way to crawl before reaching perfection, such as I, for example. You don't remember your previous incarnations because every incarnation is a separate life of your soul, a separate dream, if you like. The soul is not dependent on the presence of the body. This is just one of the forms in which it can exist. The body is just a kind of biosuit. You may ask, what's the point of all these transformations? Such are the fundamental qualities of reality and life movement and transformation. A frame moves along a film roll. A caterpillar transforms into a butterfly. The butterfly lays its larva. The larva transform into caterpillars, and those, in turn, become butterflies. At your current stage of evolution, you are caterpillars, small and unpleasant. That's just how you are. I'm going to keep an eye on you. So listen, sleeping and waking life are roughly the same thing. In the early years, you did not distinguish your dreams from reality. You don't remember it now, but back then, you did not think there was a boundary or any difference between this world and that. Then the grown-ups explained to you that the world of dreams is just a product of your imagination, that it isn't real. In fact, you were fed a false belief. That world is just as real as this. It exists just in another space. You move from one space to another when you wake up and when you fall asleep. Does that surprise you? Does it scare you? You got used to the idea, but still, dreaming and waking that follows the dream are like life and death. Life is the dream, death is the waking experience, but not the other way around, you see. Okay, my dears, let's not run before we can walk, one step at a time. There are three similarities and one difference between dreams and waking. I'll come to the differences a little later. The similarities are these. First, both in waking and dreaming, you are asleep, and because of this, you are helpless in both. This and the other reality exist independently of your will, but I will teach you to wake up, both in dreaming and in waking life. Second, in both spaces, reality moves like a frame in a film roll, yet you don't understand that because you only know how to see what is right underfoot. You lost the ability to look ahead when you started to believe what the grown-ups said about dreams not being real. Third, 
Here and there, the moving frame can be controlled. The reason you don't control the movement is that your attention is stuck in the current frame. You'll find out what this means in a bit, although finding out doesn't necessarily mean understanding it. When you do understand it, however, you will be able to shift reality. Two screens. And so, my dears, we have arrived at three premises. Both in dreaming and waking life, you are asleep. Dreams and everyday reality are a moving frame. The frame's movement can be controlled, but you don't know how to. You don't control the movement in your silly dreams and your sorry little life, firstly, because you are asleep, and secondly, because you don't even realize it's possible. Let's begin with something simple. What is sleep? Remember I said that you were brought into the world? You weren't given a self-instruction manual? Okay, so you have two screens, an inner and an outer screen. You also have the faculty of attention. This is always directed either toward the inside or the outside, very rarely in between. So you are constantly asleep. When you are lost in thought, your attention is totally immersed in the inner screen. When this is the case, you may not notice what is happening around you and be acting on autopilot. Conversely, when your attention is occupied by something external, you forget yourself and again, act reflexively. This is what sleep is, a reflexive state, in which your attention is immersed either in the outer or the inner screen. In this kind of state, you are helpless, unable to control either yourself or what is happening to you. In this case, sleeping and dreaming are not the same. Sleep is an antibiotic state. A dream is something you see, either in the dream space or in the waking space. Dreams and everyday reality are essentially the same. Reality is your waking dream. Reality is a dream, and a dream is also reality. Why? You will understand very soon. Now for the instructions. To wake up in a dream or waking reality, you must pull your attention away from the inner and outer screen and shift it to your awareness center. You are quite capable of doing this. It's easy. Tap your fingers around the area of your nose. Where were you just now? Were you flying in your dreams, or were you admiring me wide-eyed, fabulous as I am? What was your attention immersed in? Which screen? Where is it now? Find a midpoint between the two screens. From this point, you will be able to observe your thoughts and what is going on around you. You will be able to see the reality that surrounds you and yourself within this reality. Nothing is stopping you from watching both screens at the same time. You can do this. It's just that nobody has ever told you it was possible, and it has never occurred to you that it might be a good idea. Grown-ups have told you to look here, listen to me, and do as I tell you. You were taught to focus your attention on the outer screen. When something does not work out, you fall into despair and sit alone with your unhappy thoughts about how small, helpless, and unfortunate you are. You have chained yourselves to the inner screen as the only available refuge. Gradually, your attention got used to sticking to one screen or the other without resting in the middle. Eventually, you stop controlling your attention entirely, so it does not obey you. It floats about of its own accord, and you are constantly falling into a non-conscious state. In this state, you are capable of taking effective action. You may be deceived, hurt, frightened, robbed, even beaten, and still you cannot respond adequately. You are constantly struggling with emotional complexes. You depend on external circumstances and chase after good luck. You know who chases after good luck? Losers. That's what you are, losers. Because the level of your effectiveness in a non-conscious state is no more than 5 to 10%. It's okay. Don't cry, my little ones. Everything can be put right, and I'll tell you how. A Stroll Through a Dream In the last lesson, my dears, you learned that sleep is a condition in which your attention is immersed in a screen. You can sleep or not sleep in a dream as in waking reality. To wake up, you must bring your attention to the awareness center. Your awareness center is an observation point from which you can see where your attention is directed in any one moment and what it is focusing on. At the same time, you see what you are doing and what is going on around you. Now wake up and ask yourself, where am I? What am I doing? Where is my attention? Right now you have just woken up and found yourself at the awareness point. Here I am, and this is the reality that surrounds me. I am aware. 
I can see myself and I can see reality. This is an unfamiliar state for you, my precious ones. You only get occasional glimpses of it. The rest of the time, you are transfixed by either the inner or the outer screen. Now, try and hold the state of awareness for at least a half an hour and see what happens. You'll find it will be interesting. It is best to do this in the morning after you have slept well and are feeling bright and happy. It is not worth trying it when you're in a bad mood. It won't work. So get into the observation point telling yourself, I see myself and I see reality. Set yourself the intention. Today, I'm going to stroll through a waking dream. Then go for a walk, wherever you like, to work or to university, in this state of clarity. For the best effect, go to a place where nobody knows you, on a walk to a shopping center or to an entertainment center. This will be a free walk through a dream. When you are immersed in either one of the screens, you are not yourself. You aren't in control either of yourself or the situation. The opposite is true, in fact. Any situation can turn into a dream and control you. And what happens when you become self-aware? You free yourself, and from this moment on, your dreaming, whether asleep or in waking, doesn't matter which, becomes conscious. You are in control of yourself, and most importantly, you acquire the capacity to control the situation around you. But more on that later. For now, try just going for a walk and observing what you see. For example, you turn on your awareness and go into a shop. Say hello, walk about, look around, maybe ask a question and observe the reaction of the shop attendants. Just don't fall asleep. Before you speak, be sure to direct your attention to the center. I see myself and I see reality. You'll find that people will look at you with a certain curiosity and for some reason be especially responsive and well disposed toward you in a way they were not before. What has changed? Unlike you, the people around you are still asleep. Their attention is occupied and they are involved in their everyday scenarios, like in a film. Their thoughts are unclear and their actions non-conscious. You could say they live as if they were characters in a film. You, unlike the others around you, have woken up in the dream, as if you had stepped from the screen down into the cinema hall. At any moment, you can leave, return to the movie, and walk around freely among the other characters, regardless of the narrative. When you are in this state, you may come across to others as a little otherworldly, they vaguely sense that there is something odd about you, but cannot say what exactly. Don't worry, they're not aware that they are treating you with a certain friendliness and curiosity. And you don't let on that you know something they don't. Do you know where their friendliness towards you comes from, especially in those who you don't know? To them, you are like a firefly in a land of shadows. When you are in a state of conscious awareness, your energy flows differently. It can't be seen physically, but it can be felt subconsciously. Just by walking through a waking dream, at the very least, you will attract the attention and goodwill of those around you. You can make new friends and spend the time in pleasant conversation. But that is just the start. Be smart. Learn to drive reality. If you don't drive yourselves mad first, <laughs> hey, okay, don't worry, my little ones. First entry into reality. Well, my dears, if you have already walked through a waking dream, you should now be clear that the comparison of reality to a motion picture is no simple allegory. You really were there as a living character, while the other participants continued to move around as if they were sleeping and following some kind of external script. The comparison may not seem wholly fitting. After all, we all understand that people sleep in bed at night and during the day operate more or less consciously. However, you saw for yourself how negligible this proportion of more or less is when you noticed your own attention constantly falling into either the internal or the external screen. You undoubtedly saw this and now know how it happens. From now on, whenever you go for a walk in the dream, you will catch yourself continually falling back into the screen and drifting off to sleep again. Something distracted you, caught your attention, or you started thinking about something and, and that's it you cease to exist as an aware human being. You can't even call your soul your own. So who owns it? Who are you taking orders from? You are being directed by an external script woven into a motion picture in which you are now one of the characters. I shall gradually explain what all this means all in good time. For now, you must be clear about one simple thing. Both in sleeping and in waking, you are in a film being carried along in the flow of the script. 
You can't call your soul your own because your attention is not your own. The moment you wake up and take control of your attention, the script will lose its hold on you. Of course, you have to go to work and attend classes as usual and fulfill your day-to-day -day obligations, but not as strictly as when you are directed by the script. Unlike the other characters around you who are sleeping, you see yourself, you see reality, and you can consciously control your will, which you haven't been doing before now. This is your first step into a new level of self-mastery and mastering of your own reality. You have woken up from ordinary sleep many times, but you have not yet tried reaching a higher level, right? In an ordinary dream, you are helpless, even if you are aware that you were dreaming. You are inside a film and completely gripped by the story because your attention is immersed in the screen. But unlike the other characters, you are capable of dragging your attention up another level, i.e. waking up in the dream and even going two levels higher and waking up in reality. The characters in a dream can't do this. How are they different to waking people? They have no self-awareness. They have no sense of personal identity. They have no personal will. They are not free to act as they see fit. They are subject to the script. They have no soul. They are simply templates. Mannequins. When you learn to wake up in the dream, try the following experiment. Ask a dream mannequin this question. Who are you? They will try and avoid the question or will tell you what the role in the script is, but they won't say, I am myself. They don't have their own self. In the same way, you could ask the mannequin, do you know that I am sleeping now and I'm seeing you in a dream? This question will throw them too because they have never fallen asleep and never woken up. The dream mannequin lives in a film just like a fictional character, once shot on a film roll. The only difference is that a normal film is shot by normal people, whereas the film rolls of dreams are stored in the Eternity Archive. They have always been there and always will be for as long as this universe exists. Living people have a soul, will, and self-perception. They can say, I am myself, although that is all they can say about themselves. Living people are aware of themselves, but their self-awareness, as you have seen for yourself, sleeps, and their will is used rarely when they need to mobilize themselves to take some kind of action. And what's more, the will is used only within the context of the current frame, but we'll talk about this a little later. I have already done you a great honor spending so much time with you, my little fit-for-nothings. Make the most of this moment. Admire me, praise me, flatter me. I am Toofty, your high priestess. Tracking your attention. And so, my dear ones, let's repeat what we've covered so far. In your usual state of consciousness, you are characters in a film. If your attention is not your own, your soul is not your own. You are directed by an external script which wires you into the film. I use these terms so that it will be more accessible for you because in sleeping and waking life, you do pretty much the same thing. You watch the film and take part in it as a character with a set role without the right to spontaneous behavior. If you still doubt that your actions are bound rather than autonomous, look at your attention. Where was it just now? To whom did it belong? Not to you, do you see? Then to whom and for what? To the very same script. You, or rather yourself, is your attention. If you do not control yourself, the script directs you. Whether when you are sleeping or in waking life, it's the same either way. A dream is the same as reality, and reality is the same as a dream. Let's say that life is a waking dream, and an ordinary dream is a sleeping dream. A dream can be conscious or non-conscious. In the unconscious dream, you are as stupid and helpless as little bunnies. But take control of your attention, and you will come alive in the film, acquiring the ability to act willfully as you see fit. You become a responsible, sane character who can freely roam around in the dream. You have already tried it in waking life. With time, you will learn to do the same in your sleep. However, it is much more important to have this ability in waking life because even though the film of sleep has a real film role in the Eternity Archive, it is still virtual. Life, on the other hand, is real. In life, you either helplessly kick your legs about in someone else's script or you implement your own. The only thing stopping you from doing this is your habit of falling into the inner and outer screen your attention won't stay long in the center of awareness. 
This is quite normal for you. But what you can do, ugly fit for nothings that you are, is to develop the new habit of returning your attention to the center. Setting out for a stroll through the dream, tell yourself that you won't forget, that you must wake up. Literally set yourself this goal. Otherwise, it will completely slip your mind that you were meant to be focusing on something. If you are lazy and forgetful, you won't learn anything. While on your walk, you will need to catch yourself as you constantly fall and drift off. Don't worry. Don't give up. Just bring your attention back over and over again. Arrange to track your attention with your attention itself. That is, yourself. There is no need to try and hold your attention at the center all the time without taking a break. The meaning and value of this exercise lie in something else. Your ability to respond to what is happening. Usually, any event, even the most inconsequential, draws you into the outer film or into the inner concerns. Whatever the situation, it lulls you into sleep. Now you need to develop the reverse habit. Not to fall asleep, but to wake up. Any event, even the slightest whiff of your environment, should put you on your guard. Take it as a signal to awaken. Likewise, any action you take should remind you that you need to check your focus of attention. You have two triggers for this. Outer. As soon as something happens, you wake up. And inner. Before you do something, you wake up. Examples of external triggers. You meet with someone. Someone asks you for something. Something happened close to you. It doesn't matter what. Some kind of sound. Any kind of movement. Anything that previously attracted and engaged you. As soon as something happens, focus your attention on it, but don't lose control of your attention. Keep it at the center. Examples of internal triggers. You're getting ready to go somewhere, to do something, to talk to someone. Before you take any action at all, bring your attention to the center. Specifically before, because afterwards it will be too late. You will simply discover that you fell asleep, then woke up to remember that you were sleeping. All this can only be learned through frequent repetition, like in the martial arts. There is no other way. On the other hand, when you learn to control the focus of your attention, you will be able to control your piffling life. And then, perhaps your life will stop being so piffling. For now, I give you a warning. You have woken up in a dream, acquired strength and awareness, while those around you continue to sleep. Do not think this advantage makes you superior. Don't treat others with arrogance or condescension. This prerogative belongs solely to me because I am Tufti, your priestess, and you are my subjects who must listen to me and admire me unstintingly. Do you? Look at me. Composing reality. So, my dear pretties, you now have a greater understanding and have learned something. See, I praise you too. In our last lesson, we studied how to track attention. Set yourself the goal of remembering to track your attention. As soon as something happens, you wake up. Before doing anything, you wake up. If you do this, you will develop the habit of controlling your attention and eventually your life. But this does not give you the right to look down on those who are asleep. Observe them quietly without giving away that you know something they don't. Pretend that you are also asleep. This goes for all walks, both in waking and in sleeping. Remember, before entering the dream, you should be well disposed toward others. Otherwise, you will be punished. A superior, arrogant, disdainful, insolent, pompous, stuck-up, finicky, smart-aleck know-it-all will get a clip around the ear. Not from me, but from reality. Don't expect such an honored privilege from me. Now listen. At our first meeting, I said this phrase. Reality is what has never been and never will be, and only is in the here and now. Reality exists only for a single moment, like a frame on a film roll, which moves from the past into the future. What are we meant to understand by this? This means that in any moment, only the immediate impression of reality, the illuminated frame, is ever real. Everything else is virtual, the past as well as the future, and it is all stored forever in a film archive where everything is recorded. Everything that has been, that will be, and ever may be. The past and the future are both information. Information is intangible. You can't touch it, but the media that carries the information is material and can be opened. This is how clairvoyants look into the past and tell the future. The film archive truly exists, although it is intangible, like the ether. Ether substance hangs in the dream space, 
Both in sleeping and in waking reality, the dream space is whole. In your sleep, what you see is what could be, either past or future. But whether it happened or will happen is not a foregone conclusion, as the variants are infinite in number. What might happen in a dream could also take place in waking reality and vice versa. In this sense, the dream space is a single film archive. You can watch it and you can exist within it, both in a dream and in waking, but you only actually exist in each frame once. Each subsequent frame is a new realization, an upgrade of everything living and non-living, right down to the level of the atom. Only the souls of living beings remain unchanged. They are capable of watching the films of dreams and moving along the film roll of reality, together with the frame. So yourself is the same as it was in the past, as when it flew about in your dream when you were asleep, and as it will be in the future. Our world exists in animate as well as inanimate form. Life is embedded like inclusions in a material reality. Reality is an inanimate substance. Life is animate, and life can influence the course of reality. Life can compose reality. The last point, my little knights, is the most important thing you need to understand. To compose reality means to choose the film role and determine the direction in which the frame is moving. You have this opportunity, but you don't use it, just as you fail to use your capacity for directing the focus of your attention. You have to compose reality ahead of time instead of fighting the current circumstances of your life. But what do you do? You try and change your reality within the current frame. Do you understand what you are doing? Again, what is the actuality of life? Is it that which has never been and never will be and is here and now? The actuality of life only exists to the extent that it has already occurred. You cannot change what has already happened. But that is what you are trying to do because everything that surrounds you is that which has already happened. The present differs very little from the past. The past is long gone and the present exists only for a brief moment so you can't change that either. While you are in the present moment, you are in effect continually in the past because your attention is enmeshed in the current frame. The illusion grabs hold of you and keeps you from entering the future, which is why the future isn't up to you. You might think that you are conscious of what you are doing, that you are taking decisive action, solving problems, and achieving your goals, but all this is happening in the current frame in a non-conscious state. And so, the script carries you along a film role that you did not choose. All you are doing, really, is helplessly twitching your paws. That's who you are, my sweets, my pumpkins. It's exhausting being with you. The Intention Plate As always, my precious ones, we will recap what we did last time. The actuality of life is that which has already occurred. You cannot change what has already happened, and nonetheless, you try and change your given reality in the current frame, which is why the future does not depend on you. What do you need to do? Setting reality ahead of time instead of fighting the actuality of your current life. Much of this will sound quirky to you as for the first time you came across a reality that is unfamiliar and strange. It's still all the same, your reality, to which you are accustomed, but somehow different. Baffling, right? Listen to what I'm saying, and don't bother me with questions. Why the film role archive exists, and who shot the films to capture them for eternity, isn't given to snotty pookies like yourselves to understand. Be grateful to the High Creator that you are allowed to move with the frame, for that is quite something. But you are seriously slacking in your development. You're not even using what you already have. Let me remind you what it means to move with the frame. As you know, the past cannot be changed. Forget about the present, too. It has already occurred and is of no interest to you. On the other hand, you have the opportunity to compose the future, to choose the film role along which the next frame will move. How? You have two control functions, attention and intention. We have already dealt with attention. This accounts for your state of awareness. Intention accounts for your actions. In order to undertake something, you must first take into your head the idea of it. When you actually come to execute your conceived idea, your intention is realized through action. 
However, all your actions pertain to the current frame and are realized there because your intention is wedged inside it. It is just the same as when your attention gets glued to one of the screens. And just as attention has two screens, there are two intention centers, inner and outer. The inner center is responsible for all your basic functionality and is located in the frontal part of the skull. This is your petty intention. When you concentrate, you wrinkle your forehead. When you intend to do something, you tense your muscles. Your muscles allow you to carry out primitive activities in the current frame. The outer center you totally neglect to make use of, even though it accounts for the movement of the current frame. You can determine instantly where the outer center is located, right now. Every single one of you has an intention plate. It is an energy plexus similar to an ordinary plate. You can't see it, but you can feel it like a phantom limb, which used to be there but is not anymore. Rather than hanging straight down, it sticks out at an angle to the spine. It's a really funny kind of plate. The outer intention center is at the tip of the plate. It is a spot between the shoulders, only not flat to the spine, but a little away from it. You will find the precise spot intuitively. The exact distance is of no significance. It is enough to focus your attention on it, and you will feel where it is. If you can't feel it yet, read the chapter, Plate with Flow, and then you will get it. The principle of the outer center is very simple. You transfer your attention to the end of the plate and imagine the picture of any event you would like to attract into your life. This illuminates the future frame, and what you visualize becomes manifest in physical reality. You may ask my sweets how this is possible. It is very simple, and yet you did not know about the plate or how to use it. The thing is, is that you are bogged down in the current slide, big time. You are used to looking at what your eyes can see, but they only see what's right in front of you, and you feel that you can only do something about the things your eyes can see. So where are your eyes focused? In the outer screen. When something is not going right, you immerse yourself in the inner screen of your thoughts and feelings. And what are all your thoughts and feelings about? Again, about everything that you can see and everything that is happening to you. This means that your attention is not your own and your intention is subordinate to a script that is not your own. You are capable of coming up with the idea for your own script. It's just that you don't know how to bring it to life. Sometimes you dream of what you would like your future to look like, yet the future frame can only be illuminated from the external intention center, whereas you are accustomed to using the inner petty center. The current slide is your illusion and a trap. That's how it is. Okay, okay, don't cry, my sweets, my darlings. Don't get your plates in a twist. I will teach you how to escape the trap and how to work with the plate. You will learn. Hey, it'll be fun. How to work with the plate. Chop, chop, hurry, hurry, my pitiful ones. A new lesson, but first, a recap so far. Intention has two centers, inner and outer. The inner center is located in the forehead, the outer at the tip of the plate. Inner intention accounts for everyday activities in the current frame. Outer intention is capable of moving the future slide, composing reality. You do want to learn to compose reality, don't you? Of course you do. Good. So let's say you have a dream. There's a saying in folklore, it does no harm to dream, which hints that it is also useless to dream. Does this mean that the silly saying is true and that my snotties have nothing to hope for? I will explain to you in the next lesson why dreams don't come true. For now, we will move directly to the technique. First, do it. Then you will understand. That's the best way to learn. Now, listen carefully. First, wake up and log into the awareness point. As usual, say to yourself, I see myself and I see reality. Second, activate the plate. Feel it. Here it is. As soon as you focus your attention on the plate, it instantly rises up at an angle to your spine and is activated. Third, without taking your attention away from the plate, imagine a picture of the future. In your thoughts, in words, on the screen, as well as you can, compose your reality. 
You may notice that when you activate the plate, your eyes shift into a different gear. Try and feel that. You have raised your plate. Now what happens to your eyes? They become a little wider as if they are beginning to shine. This is a new, unfamiliar mode of being for you. Previously, you just watched the outer film and surrendered yourself to it. Now, you can turn the film roll independently. Once again, this is how. You've woken up, focused your attention on the plate, and then, keeping your senses attuned to the plate, you imagine what you desire as if it were depicted on the screen. That is how you illuminate the future frame and how to make it manifest in physical reality. Later, you'll learn how to do this instantaneously in a single movement. The plate works like a film projector. You can turn your little I wants and if onlys on the inner screen as much as you like, but it won't be very effective. Practically a misfire. The projector runs at full capacity in the moment that your thoughts, words, and images originate from the outer intention center. So if you want to do more than just wallow in your own thoughts, if you want to influence how your reality is shaped, turn on the plate. It is not essential to keep your attention totally focused on the tip of the plate. It is enough to sense it like you would a phantom limb. However, you can activate it whenever you wish. The specific sensations are a very personal thing. You don't have to pay attention to the eyes. You can keep them closed or be completely blind. It doesn't make any difference. What is important is that the thoughts, words, and images are in tandem with the plate. So my bunnies, my little fish, you're just a step away from becoming rulers of the universe. I'm filled with such awe that I don't know whether to swoon or bow in reverence. Go on, surprise me with your abilities. First of all, though, you must surprise yourself. And for that, you must acquire the practical skills needed to control the moving frame. We'll begin with the basics, the fulfillment of immediate desires. Let's say on the film roll of the day, a certain event is looming, which could have a successful or an unsuccessful outcome for you. To start with, take the simplest thing that will fit into one frame. This could be, for example, making a purchase, finding a parking space, any everyday task at work, university, outside, or at home. You have the power to insert the frame into a successful film roll. You already know what to do. You wake up, activate the plate, and without losing a sense of the plate, you imagine that what you desire is coming true. Then you can let go of the feeling of the plate and continue to operate as normal. Repeat the act of illuminating the frame a few times over, just to make sure. You will see for yourself what follows. Keep your diapers dry. Don't wet yourself in the process. You experience very mixed feelings when you understand that something has taken place that is impossible. You will find it hard to believe that outer reality surrenders to your will. Usually the opposite happens, and you are subject to external reality. The statistics for your successful experiments depend, wait for it, on your sense of the reality of what is happening. Your criterion for reality is routine and habit. Anything is real if it has happened several times. Something that has never happened cannot be real, right? In other words, for you, things are only possible if they fit into the mold of your worldview. If you don't know that it is possible to ride a bike with two wheels, you wouldn't be riding one. It's exactly the same with the movement of the frame. You won't be able to control it while you believe it to be unrealistic. So what can you do to make it real? You will find out very soon, my darlings. Again and again, over and over, my sweeties. Repetition. Your pain, my gain. Let's recap what you need to do. Wake up, activate the plate, hold the feeling, compose reality. Whether it works or not depends on whether you accept or negate what is happening. It is only possible if it fits into the mold of your worldview. You are relatively primitive beings. Nothing can happen to you that does not fit with how you perceive the world and yourself within it. All sorts of incredible things happen in your dreams but simply because you reduce your standards of critical assessment. In waking, it's the opposite. Everything has to be rigorously reconciled with the mold, so your ability to move the frame depends on whether you can concede the possibility with certainty or whether you remain in doubt of its viability. Performing simple miracles will be easy for you. You will be able to create anything that corresponds with your everyday routine experience. 
Your experience is what consolidates the mold. More complex movements of the frame require new content to be spliced in. I will repeat the same thing many times, over and over, again and again, until you understand. And if you don't understand, I will order you to chop off your head. I can do without idiots. All right, don't cry, my feeble ones. Now, listen on. Once previously, I said, the script carries you along a film role that you did not choose. Broadly speaking, the film role is your lifeline and the script is your fate. You don't choose your fate, and not only that, you don't even try and change it, although you could. You are foolish to console yourselves with the hope that fate, although preordained, is still in your hands. In fact, it's a lot worse than that. You are being led by a harsh script. It only appears to you that you take action as you see fit. It sounds plausible, but it's still an illusion. Not only what you see, but the things you do can be illusory. You won't be able to see through this kind of illusion because you are constantly in it. Do you remember we talked about the dream mannequins? Mannequins inhabit the pictures of your dreams, like the heroes of a motion picture, once shot onto a roll of film. You watch a dream and the mannequins move. You watch a film and the heroes come to life. As soon as the film or dream is over, all the characters freeze until the next viewing, or otherwise, forever. Do you think that the characters in a motion picture or computer game are aware that they are in a film and that you are watching them? No. Are the dream mannequins aware that you are seeing them in a dream? Again, no. And now I am asking you, do you know who they are? You can't ask the characters in the film. You could ask the mannequins, but there's not much point. You are different from the former and the latter in that you can at least dimly grasp the meaning of the question. And also, in that you are able to be self-aware. But when are you self-aware? Only in the moment that you ask yourself this question. The rest of the time, where are you? Who are you? You are the characters in a film role, in the life that is happening to you. You don't live your life. Your life happens to you. Neither the dream mannequin nor the hero of the motion picture are capable of distinguishing the illusion of their actions or, more precisely, the illusion of action occurring. So why would you think that you would be capable of doing so? No, you are, of course, capable, my clever ones, and yet you don't. All the time that you aren't asking yourself the question, where are you and who are you? You are just exactly as lacking in rational understanding as the characters of a film or a dream. Your attention is constantly immersed in one of the screens and your intention in the current frame. So your motives and actions are not in fact yours. Do you see? What happens literally is the following. At a certain point in time, you start to want something and you struggle to do whatever it is. You think that these are your own motives and actions, whereas in fact, they are spelled out in the script. You might think that you had the idea for something, but in actual fact, this is just the story twist for your role. You're consumed by current reality to such an extent that you stop being aware of what you're doing and fail to see through the illusion. You have your own mannequins in the films stored in the Eternity Archive. When you watch one of these films in a dream, your consciousness finds a mannequin, which comes to life and starts moving. As long as you are having the dream, you are living in the body of a dream mannequin as one of multiple different variants. Take a look in a mirror sometime when you're in a dream. You won't recognize yourself. In the film role, along which your life is running, it is exactly the same. Your consciousness enters the next version of the dummy, which comes to life and becomes you in the current frame. But here's the question. How are you different to the dream mannequins if in waking life you live as if you were in a dream? And generally speaking, what makes you any better than a snail? Repulsive, slimy snails, which respond equally as primitively to all external stimuli. They tuck away their horns and hide in a little house. Your fate is as predetermined as you are predictable. Even the little that you have learned so far, my dears, is incomprehensible to you because it does not fit the mold of your worldview. And as long as it remains inaccessible to you, you will be free in dreams and bound in your fate. But when, finally, you see the light and ditch the illusion, you will be able to stroll through reality, like a living being inside a film. And you will be able to pick a new reality, like choosing a reel from the archive. And now an interlude. 
I am exiting my film and setting off for a book. I'll see you there. Bye for now, snails. How to escape a trap. Pleasure before business, my little buffoons. Who said the opposite? Your pain is my gain, or even my amusement. So, there is the illusion of image, and there is illusion of action. Motion is not what you do, but rather what is happening. You are not living your life. Life is happening to you. You are directed by a strict script, and for this reason, you are free to daydream, but bound in your choice of fate. What other insulting things can I say to you? I'll remind you of the main point of the previous lesson. You might think that you are your own master and that you act consciously. In actual fact, you are only aware of yourself in the moment that you ask yourself this question. The remainder of the time, your awareness sleeps and surrenders to the outer script. The ability to show self-awareness for a single moment won't free you from the script. You are characters inside a film and this is simultaneously an illusion and a trap. Regardless of how much you might think of yourself, that is where you are, and the trap has its hold on you. What is stopping you from escaping? Mainly three things. One, ignorance of the fact that you are a character. Two, a reflexive psyche, or snail horns. And three, the mold, limited by notions of the possible and the impossible. Look livelier, livelier, happier, happier, amphibians. Everything can be put right. You already have the first thing you need to escape. This is very important because anyone who is ignorant of the illusion remains in it forever. Nobody has told you about the illusion of action and you never had an inkling because such a thing, in your opinion, is impossible. Now you know, but this is not enough. Let's say you're a snail and you have learned about the illusion. Would you then stop being a snail? If you cry, oh, what a misfortune, I don't want to be a snail, will anything change? No, you cannot just come to life in a motion picture and start doing whatever you want without following the script. Here a slightly different approach is needed. There are still two hurdles that must be overcome, habits and views. In actual fact, you don't possess these things, they possess you. But that's okay, we'll drag you out of the coma yet. You are made snails by the habit of waiting and hoping for something to happen rather than composing your own reality. Will it come off or not? Will it work out or not? This is a passive position. From this position, all you are capable of doing is giving reality a prod and pulling back your horns at the slightest little thing. In order to stop being wet and snotty and become beautiful and happy, you need to shift into active gear. Not wait and hope, but compose your reality. Your mold is an obstacle, as it tells you that it is impossible to compose your own reality. This is your little house, but I'll drag you out of it, nasty and slippery though you are. New habits and views are developed just exactly as the old ones took root, through multiple repetitions. Only from now on, instead of staring at reality and following it, you will actively control the movement of the frame. Can you guess which frame? Not the one in which you find yourself in the present moment, but the one that is coming up. As you already know, you can't change the reality of the current frame because it has already come into being. You can only specify the nature of the reality that is yet to come. So your attention should be focused several frames ahead. Just like when you tracked your attention, now you will need to track the forthcoming frame. For this, there are three triggers. Expectation. Something is going to happen. You are waiting, hoping for something. Intention. You intend to set off somewhere or do something. Problem. Something happened that needs resolving. Whenever you expect something, don't wait or hope. Compose reality. Whenever you intend to do something, don't rush to get on with it. First, compose reality. Whenever a problem arises, again, don't wait, don't hope, don't fuss. Compose your reality. Frame illumination method. One. Catch yourself at one of the triggers. Two, wake up. I can see myself and I can see reality. Three, activate the plate. Hold the feeling. Compose reality. Four, drop the feeling off the plate. If the event is very important to you, repeat the illumination several times. 
Try to remember and constantly think about the forthcoming frame. It won't work for you every time. At first, you will keep forgetting. Old habits aren't that easy to unstick. You have to see it out and replace it with a new one. Don't be lazy. Be smart. Get on with it or else I'll see you out. You're good for nothing. Nobody loves you except for me. Reprogramming. Don't get all steamed up. Don't get steamed up, my dears. Mug up. Let's repeat what we've covered so far. The snail horns and house keep you trapped in the current frame. To free yourself from the trap, you must shift into active gear. Don't wait and hope. Compose reality. Requirements. Constantly practice managing the upcoming frame. Method. Expectation, intention, problem, immediate activation, and frame illumination. Compose events in which the outcome is unknown, but also compose things that are likely to come true. For example, you are going somewhere and intend to go through a door. You know that this event will happen anyway. Nevertheless, illuminate this frame. Imagine it in your thoughts, in words, and even better, visually, opening the door and walking through it. Don't be lazy, don't be lazy. Do you think that you can hide in your house and no one will see you? I'll get you either way. Why do we need endless repetition? In order to rewire the snail mold. You won't believe that reality will succumb to your will until you see it for yourself. Moreover, repeatedly. Controlling frame movement in small scale events is the most effective training method, as a result of which you will learn to wake up and control your attention, Develop your plate, visualization skills, and intention. Switch into active gear and eventually acquire the ability to free yourself from the dominant script and compose your own reality. What happens when you activate yourself? You become the only character in your entire environment who is not subject to the external script. And failing that, as soon as you lose yourself and become immersed in the motion picture, you instantly identify with it, becoming its integral part. Moreover, a dependent, imitative part, a mannequin. But once again, you drag your attention away from the current frame and illuminate the upcoming frame. In this moment, you come alive in the motion picture and start moving freely at your own discretion. Now you still occupy the same mannequin, but in a totally different capacity. Imagine a mannequin in a shop stepping down from the display window and going about its business. This is roughly what happens to you. You are still in the motion picture as before, but at the same time you are taken out of the sequencing as if your individual frame could move freely along the film roll. Let's just say now your frame frequency is different from the frequency of reality frames, which enables you to free yourself up from the confines of the dominant script. Have you ever seen in a movie or on TV what a spinning wheel or propeller looks like? It appears to spin instantly or turn in the opposite direction because the spinning blade frequency and interval are quite different to the frame interval. Similarly, your attention and plate manipulations place you in a different frequency and interval to reality. In this sense, you can move freely about the film. The yet to be released future drags you from the sequence of the present when you take hold of that future and try to affect it. The impending reality, though written in the eternity archive, is always multivariant and has not been totally defined or composed by anyone. Nobody owns it yet. When someone turns up who will compose a variant of it, then that future surrenders to their instruction. And if that someone is you, it becomes yours. Do you want reality to be yours? So take it and compose it as you wish. This is a fundamentally new approach to your reactions, behavior, and existence. The difference is that your attention will no longer get stuck in the current frame, but strive ahead instead. Observance is replaced by advance and passive waiting by agency. You no longer string along with reality as if on a leash, but direct it, driving it forward. But before your desired reality can become the physical reality of your daily life, you, my head choppers, must get yourself a reprogramming. I can't do this for you. You may not get it perfect straight away. You will only be able to create what agrees with your everyday routine experience. Until you finally believe that you are capable of composing reality, it will slip away from you unyielding. The only way of recasting the mold is the same way it was created in the first place, through daily mundane practice. Track the impending frame, track yourself, compose reality. 
If you do as I tell you, reality will do as you tell it. It is best to carry out regular multiple repetitions until it becomes a habit. Otherwise, you won't learn anything. And if you don't learn, I will remove your houses and turn you into even more horrible creatures. Slugs. I am Toofty, your owner, and I do with you what I wish. Transformation. Here, here, my wet-eared crookshanks. That's it. Come out of your houses, gather round, and let's recall the previous lesson. The method of awakening and illumination detaches you from the script. You are mannequins, step down from the window, going about your business. You are still in the film, but at the same time, you have dropped out of the sequence. Having detached yourself from the film role, you can create your own film. Controlling the frame movement for simple events is your training and reprogramming. It is also your transformation. You will gradually transform from snails to fireflies. When you illuminate the frame, you radiate an inner light, and the desired events fly to you like moths to a light. Luminescent creatures looking forward. That is how the creator conceived of you. And so you once were before you got stuck in the motion illusion. Much has been lost, but some things can be restored. Do you want to be a firefly? Then lively, lively, track the impending frame. Track yourself. Compose your reality. Those around you, those who are still snails, will extend their horns toward you and move closer out of curiosity. You won't always make it work at first. You may understand that you are capable of composing reality, but in the depths of your consciousness, you will still have doubts. This means that the reprogramming is not yet complete. This is why training is essential to shift you into active gear, to get you used to looking ahead rather than down at your feet. And finally, no, not to kill you, though my hands are already itching to, but to convince you that you really can compose your own reality incredibly and breathtakingly. There is just one little thing. You must try without making an effort, my assiduous ones. Illuminating the frame successfully requires concentration, not effort. Can you concentrate for a couple of minutes? Well, just for a minute then? That's all that is required of you. Follow the illumination method in a calm, relaxed manner. You are not permitted to tense up. Not an option. Why? Because in making an effort, you will trigger your inner intention center. Whereas reality, as we have already learned, is directed from the outer center. What do you usually do when you try your utmost? You try and fight the physical reality that is already in place. So what will you do in relation to the reality that is yet to become manifest? Exactly the same. It's a habit you have. You are all eager to change things to your liking, the way you want them to be. But you won't succeed in changing anything that is already physically manifest, or for that matter, anything that isn't yet manifest. How can you change a film that has already been shot? You can only choose the future like a reel of film from an archive. Do you see the difference calmly and relaxed? Note that if your muscles become tense while you are illuminating the frame, this means that your petty intention is activated. You must work solely with the outer center, the plate. It is not something that you should exert or wield. The plate is activated easily and effortlessly. Remembering and sensing it, calmly concentrating on it is enough. Next, without losing the sensation of the plate, focus on the frame composition. Visualize the picture you desire with ease, without trying too hard. Your muscles should be relaxed. You don't need them for this. They have nothing to do with it. Quiet concentration on the plate and the frame, that is what we need. Your task is not to force reality to obey you, but to allow it to come to you of its own accord. Don't force it. The principle is not to grab hold of reality, but to illuminate it with the outer center, the plate. You are simultaneously the film projector and the viewer. You project the frame from behind and watch the film playing out in front as if neither had anything to do with you. The outer center, you must have noticed, is both yours and not yours at the same time. You mustn't put pressure on the plate. Just activate it and then send out a current of thoughts from the plate, not from the front, but from behind. Not from the stubborn, stupid, out-of-habit forehead, but from the plate, you see. You are simply illuminating the frame. It materializes itself. That part has nothing to do with you. That's it.
That's it. Why is it so important that it be nothing to do with you? I repeat again and again, my dears, it is so that the outer center works, not the inner center. The outer center involves a completely different instrument. Your outer center is closer to what is referred to as your higher self. The outer center is what directs you. The tip of the plate is your hook, by which you can be led like a mannequin. When you have no self-awareness, you are led by the script or by puppeteers who manipulate your consciousness. As soon as you regain self-awareness, your hook is again at your disposal and you can propel yourself freely. In your usual state of consciousness, you don't propel yourself, just your hands and feet, trying to nudge everything that stands in front of you without taking into the account the fact that they have you by the scruff from behind. That is how the motion illusion arises. And now you have hold of the hook yourself and begin to move reality without applying any effort, as if you weren't doing anything. What's happening then? The motion illusion is turned inside out. You aren't being moved about. You are moving yourself. You are not doing anything to reality. Reality is doing it of its own accord. That's how it is. That's how it is, my goody-goodies. The illusion is crumbling.